Hey guys, what's up? Sermo11 here with another ARC review of Hunter x Hunter. This ARC review will be over the Chimera Ant arc. So, looking at this arc subjectively, I would say, what was the point? To start things off, this arc is way too long. It started in April last year, and it ended this month. Well, it's July, let's see, um, it's July 4th, which means... Wednesday, wait no, Thursday, Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, it, it ended this month, I believe. So, that means it was over 52 episodes. The arc is slow, and it has too much build-up. See, the arc has build-up at multiple points, and it hypes up different fights, but the fights turn out to be not that good. But first, allow me to get back to the question I put out um, in the beginning. What's the point? See, the arc only established a few things, and every arc so far has had a goal in mind. The main goal of the whole series for being Gon, you know, to find his father. The Hunter exam allowed Gon and his friends to become hunters. The York New arc allowed Karapika to take on the Phantom Troop and get revenge for his clan. The auction arc was to get Greed Island to get closer to Gon's father. You know, and then they go into Greed Island, which was also there to help Gon find his father and be sort of a place for him to train. Now I ask you again, what was the point of this arc? The only things I could find with this arc were to make Gon and Killua stronger, which is practically every arc, you know, Heaven's Arena, all that, um, Greed Island, establish new characters, show off a new race of characters, kill off Netero and Kite. What else has this arc done? All character, all the characters that died uh, I don't want to say they don't matter, but they, some of them kind of don't. Um, I don't know why I typed that. That's a weird thing to type. The characters that died, the, the characters died that don't. I, I think I was talking about, the, I wrote this like a few days ago, so I'm sorry. I, I think it was the Chimera Ants that I was talking about. The characters that died, they don't really matter. They don't really affect the story. Because, I mean, Kite's death affected the story, Nethro's death affected the story, but other than that, the Chimera Ants uh, don't really affect the story overall. And I'll get, I'll get more into that, so just give me a second. You're probably thinking, but Melvin, that's a lot of stuff. The problem with this arc is that I didn't like the way it was presented, and it didn't have to be this long, because most of the Hunter x Hunter arcs were like 20 episodes. This was what I think this is over I, I know it was over 50 I don't know if it was like 60 or 70 episodes but it was a lot and this arc was much more than what it had to be all the characters that were introduced all the unnecessary details there were things such as the slightest motions that were told to us in great detail we could see it going on in anime there was no need to tell us all this inf stuff, all this information like it would be second by second from different perspectives and did they even, did, you know, like the invasion, did the invasion even last for more than a day? Like, it's too much, and I don't like that. In my review of Ping Pong and the Animation, I was saying that the story presented itself from the viewpoint of, the. it was from the viewpoint of five different characters, and um, they each got like an episode or two on them. Each character, each character got their own main perspective, which is... Um, it was like third person omniscient or something like that and I'm sure most mangas are made this way otherwise you know they, they would be extremely weird and it's hard to write you can't write a manga from a first person perspective that's that's impossible and if you do it's gonna be terrible and the problem lies in the fact that the arc takes the third person omniscient view to a whole new level like never in my life have I seen a manga or anime covering covering things in this much detail. I found it extremely annoying. While you have other reviewers praising the heck out of it, you know, Hunter x Hunter, best episode of 2014, yeah, best anime of 2014. There is no doubt that Hunter x Hunter is a great series, but this arc introduces things that makes it that make it more like a novel than a graphic novel. And I don't want to go into extreme detail with this arc review, but it's pretty much required because this arc re this arc covers a lot of material. This arc could even be split up into a few different parts. That's how long it is. So I'm gonna be doing a summary. I typed a long summary for the uh, the review. I, I don't know if you don't if you don't want to hear, it, just skip. I guess later in the video. 
but it's going to be a long, long summary, and I'll be giving my thoughts while I'm giving the summary. So here's my summary. After the events of Greed Island, Gon and Killua warp to Kite, leaving Biscuit behind. They figure out that Gon has met Kite before, and Kite was the one who saved Gon when he was a kid, and he basically inspired Gon to become a hunter. And I think he also gave Gon his father's license or something. And this is supposed to be in the first episode of the anime, but it wasn't. I don't know why it wasn't included, but they, they added it back. So we get to see this large human-like ant in a cave, and the ant is eating various creatures, and this creature is known as a chimera ant. And my problem is that they acted like they knew so much about the chimera ants, yet only one was shown, yet these are a species of ants. Like, I had to Google this, because there's a problem. One ant caused this uh, entire problem, but w was she like the only one that existed or something? Why was there one humanoid ant? Why weren't there other, why weren't there many humanoid ants? It, it didn't make any sense to me. And this, this ant was the queen, and the queen begins to require more food to, uh, you know, create these creatures, these chimera ants and stuff. So, you know, create her offspring and ultimately create a king and everything. So then she starts to eat humans, and her first two victims being two children. And this leads this leads to the queen, this leads the queen to give birth to a chimera ant named Cult. And Cult starts to collect food, and other chimera ants are born. And eventually, a large number of people go missing. So Gon and his friends go into the NGL, which is the the continent the continent of country where all this imp this stuff is going on. They go to see what's going on there. So they they start to kill ants along the way, you know, Gon, Killua, and Kite. And then we learn about a character named Gyro, which is important to this arc. Gyro had a bad childhood and a bad um, alcohol, alcoholic father who abused him and everything. And then Gyro grows up to become evil, and he creates the NGL, which is the country they're in. But he also creates the underworld in his own country, which is weird, I don't know. But he makes weapons and sells drugs. That, that's weird. Like, you created the country, but you're also doing, like, bad things. And I don't know. So then the Chimera Ants come in there and kill all of them. They, you know, they kill them. They take their bodies, I guess. And then they give them to the queen to eat. And then the NGL was doomed. The NGL was doomed from the start, considering the fact that they don't have modern technology. And the one thing I, I guess is good about this arc is that everything that is shown is important like everything that's shown in this arc is important to the arc like every every minor detail and everything is it is important to the arc but eh. the one well I already said that eventually the queen gives birth to a royal guard and the royal guard is like the the ants that serve under the king so one of the three ants yeah I already said that one of the three ants is meant to serve under the king after he's born the royal guard P2, which is the first one that's born, finds Gon and his friends and cuts Kite's arm off. See, basically, P2, P2, um, never P2, was sitting on this rock or mold that the ants lived in, and then he or she could see them from that far away. I say he or she because I believe the character is an it or I don't know. It looks like a girl. I think, I think it's a he. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's confirmed to be a he. I'm not sure. He, she, it, whatever. Uh, where was I at? Yeah, Pizzo comes in, finds Gon and his friends, cuts Kite's arm off. Gon, I, I did a review of this episode, because this episode was pretty good. Gon powers up. He's ready to go. Like, he's afraid and stuff, but he powers up. And then Killua knocks him out and gets out of there. Kite's like, go, get out of here. And then the end result at the end of the, end of the episode was Kite being dead. You know, you just have never P2 standing in this forest that's been messed up by their fight with Kite's head in his lap and um the two other royal guard members are born being poof and yuppie uh shyla poof monta yuppie then the hunter association is informed because the problem is starting to get out of hand and i would say please bear with me on this description this is only what i can rem remember because i can't find any summaries over the entire arc so i'm doing my own and some of the events might be out of order and everything but everything that i say is you know actually happened and 
Gon and Killua get out of the NGL and they have to fight two students under a hunter by the name of Morel. His students are Knuckle and Shoot. And I actually saw someone talk about this. They were like, what was the point of fighting Knuckle and Shoot if everyone was going to go to the uh, NGL anyway? And someone was like, oh, I guess that was to introduce the characters. So I, I kind of agree with that. Uh, his yeah, his students knuckle and shoot. Netero Netero was kind of over all this. He made them fight so whoever was more able could get into the NGL, and then knuckle and shoot win the fight. I think they fight like twice. I know knuckle and Gon fight more than once. I don't know if shoot and kill will fight more than once. But basically, they can't take them on. And there's other stuff, but you know, basically, Gon and Kill will somehow get involved with the NGL stuff later on. The Chimera and queen gives birth to a, a king which kills her because the king he's like ready to be born or something so he breaks the sack open which you know he, he wasn't like naturally born he he caused his own he caused his own birth I guess you could say he, he just basically rips the sack open like and it kind of like messes up the qu queen and then you know it kills her so as she's dying the other ants which view her as a mother besides the king doesn't really view her as a mother I guess you could say but the other ants view her as a mother they want to do everything for her you know it's basic stuff and they, they're surrounding her and seemingly a human baby was found inside her you know after she died or while she was dying and I think another big problem is that the villain of this arc was introduced way late in the arc it I, like, if you looked at the beginning of the episode, the be beginning of this arc, you wouldn't even know who the villain was. Who would the villain be? The villain would be, like, the queen and her her children. But the king is the actual, like, you know, major villain of this arc. And he's got to introduce late, which is weird. Uh, let me see. Where am I at? In, an important detail is that the king doesn't know his name at this point. Because, you know, he practically killed his, he practically killed his mother and just left. So he didn't really get to know his name, and he's like wondering about his name, but it's like, it's stupid. You killed your own mother. That's why you don't know your name. Um, and who was around there? It was like Morel. Yeah, I think Morel got to know his name. I don't, Netero wasn't around. I don't think Netero was around, but whatever. Because like, Colt, oh, I actually remembered something. Colt, he, he throws up a white flag, and he's trying to get help from them. So they bring in doctors and stuff to help to help her, but she dies. Uh, sorry, my my review went back up to the top. Where am I at? This is gonna be a long video, guys. So might as well get some popcorn, chill out. One second. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there are tons of details, such as other ants leaving to become kings and such. Which really wasn't covered that much. A few ants wanted to become kings, and then they they left. And then uh, there's a fight between one of the I think it, her name is Zazan, and she fights um, the Phantom Troop, which was pretty awesome. Dude, my internet just went out, and then like, okay, cool, cool. I thought Evernote was gonna start over. Uh, I'm sorry, this, that crap popped up and made me forget my place again okay yeah so a few of the ants that are trying to become kings uh get killed off and but not all of them which is odd because I, i'll just bring this up now this arc leaves some like loose ends they're not major loose ends but it's kind of weird it's like where did these ants go are they going to be important to the story the problem is i don't know what togashi is doing i don't know if he's setting something up or he's just he's just introducing it. Like, will these ants be covered? Like, will they be kings and they I don't know suddenly have like offspring and everything? Uh, that's what I want to learn about. But if if it turns out that all this information is important later in the series, good job, good job. So the king takes over this palace and he kills nearly everyone there. And then they start this program called the Selection, which is a program to turn humans into ant soldiers. And the king, he starts reading books and playing various games, you know, showing how smart he is and everything. And he, he's conquering all the, the masters of these games, these board games and everything. And he plays a girl in, called uh, Komugi. He plays, you know, he plays a game called Gungi against a girl named Komugi. Uh, those names are too close. He's never able to beat her, so he keeps her around. And he starts to possibly gain affection for her. 
which is weird because he's like an ant, but he's also, I guess, still part human. I don't know. And then Nov, one of the people with Netero, you know, to get rid of the ants, investigates the palace. He makes portals all over the place for going and um, Knuckle and all of them. But he he gets freaked out, and I think this is good storytelling, but it it, it sticks. It sticks like he uh. First of all, his hair turns gray. He's like freaked out. He's like, I'm not going back there. And then his hair falls out, and now he's rocking a, a cap. <laughs> so yeah, that that's affecting the story or affecting his character. And Palm Nove's student investigates too, but she gets kidnapped, which is also I, I would say it's more of a subplot and kind of important. So Gon and his friends try to stop this, you know, selection. They come up with a plan and have even added ants to their side because some of the ants, I guess, wanted to. Si they sided with the humans. So we have Gon, Killua, Morel, Netoro, Meliaron, Knuckle, Shoot, and Ikalgo invade the palace. Basically, they get into the palace and get different. They um 